Hi everybody! My name is Renee and I work for the Charlotte Mecklenburg Library. Today I'll be sharing an enrichment activity for kids ages 5 to 11. In this program we'll be learning about the diver Jacques Cousteau and then making our own diver in a bottle with some supplies you have around the house. If you'd like to try the activity with me, let me tell you what we'll be using. First, you'll need a clear plastic bottle like one of these. It could be a water bottle or a soda bottle, it doesn't matter. Just make sure that it's empty and clean and that it has a tight fitting lid. Next, you'll need to find some sauce packets. So it could be mustard, ketchup, mayonnaise, hot sauce, soy sauce, whatever you have left from a recent takeout meal. And the more packets you have, the better, because they don't all work the same for our experiment. It's kind of fun to figure out which ones work the best. You will need some water, so bring over a glass or a jar or a bowl that has enough water in it that you can do a float or sink experiment with the packets. And finally, since we're using water, I'm probably going to spill some, and you might too, so bring over a towel or a washcloth that you can use to clean up spills. If you'd like to try the activity with me, now would be a good time to pause the video, go find the supplies that you need, and join me back here in just a minute. Our activity today was inspired by a book from the library's biography collection. I'll be reading this book with you, but you can also check it out from our digital resources on the NC Digital Kids Library. Just use your library card or your One Access number. The book we'll be reading is called The Fantastic Undersea Life of Jacques Cousteau. It was written and illustrated by Dan Yaccarino. The Fantastic Undersea Life of Jacques Cousteau. Jacques Cousteau loved the sea. He spent his whole life exploring it. The ocean was the most incredible place he'd ever seen, and he wanted to share its beauty with the world. Growing up in France, little Jacques was a weak and sickly boy. Doctors encouraged him to swim to build up his strength, and he discovered that he loved the water. Jacques also loved to tinker and build all sorts of gadgets. He saved his money and bought a camera to make his own movies, and then he took it apart to see how it worked. When he was a young man, Jacques was badly hurt in a car accident. Doctors told him he would have to wear arm braces for the rest of his life, but he refused to accept this. Just as he had done before, he turned to the sea for strength and swam every day in the Mediterranean. A friend gave him a pair of goggles so that he could see underwater, and those goggles changed his life forever. Cousteau wanted to stay underwater longer to see even more. The diving suits of his day were heavy and bulky. They didn't allow much freedom of movement and an air hose tethered the diver to a boat. So Jacques set about tinkering, fashioning snorkels from things like inner tubes and garden hoses, but they weren't good enough. Cousteau and his engineer friend, Emile Gainan, created a breathing apparatus that they called the Aqualung. It was the first machine that would let a diver breathe underwater for long periods of time. Now Cousteau was free to truly explore, and a silent world opened up to him. Cousteau wanted to share the amazing beauty of the sea with the world, so he created an airtight cover for his camera. He made lights to illuminate the sea's mysteries and found ways to film underwater. Cousteau bought a boat and turned it into his very own floating research lab and film studio. He sailed his beloved Calypso all over the world. Cousteau discovered many treasures in the Mediterranean Sea and it was there that he shot The Silent World, the first full-length, full-color, underwater film ever made, and it took the world by storm. Cousteau's film gave people their first glimpse of the amazing universe under the waves. Everyone loved what they saw as much as Jacques did, and they wanted to see more. So Cousteau set about showing them. He and his team created even better diving equipment and cameras. Cousteau's team invented the diving saucer, which could hold two people 
and descend 350 meters into the ocean. Next came the sea flea, which held one person and could go down 500 meters. Cousteau was on a never-ending quest to go deeper and to learn more. Cousteau explored the frigid waters of Antarctica and found them teeming with penguins, humpback whales, and squid. Cousteau wanted to see if people could actually live underwater, and his team built a series of underwater labs where people lived and worked for days and weeks at a time. But they found that people need sunlight to live, and so Cousteau's dream of colonizing the ocean was not to be. Jacques Cousteau was the world's ambassador of the oceans. He produced 50 books, two encyclopedias, and dozens of documentary films. His popular TV series, The Undersea World of Jacques Cousteau, brought whales, octopuses, otters, and dolphins right into people's living rooms. While exploring off the coast of Australia, Cousteau and his crew saw coral reefs, kelp forests, and sponge gardens they came face to face with the leafy sea dragon. When diving in the waters near France, Cousteau and his crew found a sunken ship full of wine jars over 2,200 years old. They tasted the wine. Alas, it was bitter. The fish off the coast of Africa were friendly and curious and did not swim away. Cousteau was the first human being they had ever seen. A big grouper adopted the crew while they were filming and mischievously knocked over lights and cameras. Cousteau and his team explored the world. But when they went back to the Mediterranean, Cousteau found that it had changed. The seas were polluted, plants and animals were dying, and so the ocean's ambassador became their most important defender. He started the Cousteau Society, which is committed to educating people about ocean life and protecting our seas from pollution. Jacques Cousteau loved the sea. He shared its beauty with the world so that everyone could love and cherish it too. That was The Fantastic Undersea Life of Jacques Cousteau by Dan Yaccarino. I find that book to be very inspiring. I love how Jacques was an inventor and he was so creative that if he dreamed up something that didn't exist yet that he needed, well, he would just invent it and tinker until he found it. I know that some of you are probably tinkerers and inventors and adventurers too, and I hope that you found that book inspiring. I hope one day that your inventions and creations will be just as impactful as those of Jacques Cousteau. All right, let's try our activity. Today we're making a diver in a bottle. Here's one that I made earlier. The diver is a sauce packet inside a bottle filled with water. The water is like the ocean that it's diving in. But the question is, how do you make the diver dive? Well, I know the secret. Let's see if you can figure out what I'm doing in order to make that packet dive to the bottom of the bottle and then float back up to the top. It seems like a magic trick, but this is really all about buoyancy, density, and pressure. So to begin with, our packet is floating at the top of the bottle. That means that it is less dense than the water that surrounds it. It is buoyant, or it floats. Whenever you put on a life vest when you get on a boat or when you go swimming and you put on a floaty, well, that's keeping you buoyant. It's helping you to float to the top of the water. Now, some of you probably noticed that I was squeezing the bottle just a little bit. Whenever you squeeze the bottle, you're actually applying pressure to the water that's inside and you're applying pressure to the packet. And that packet has a tiny little air bubble inside that's acting like its life vest. When you squeeze that little air bubble and make it just a tiny bit smaller, it keeps the packet from floating. It takes away its buoyancy. Now let me show you how you can make your own diver in a bottle. You'll want to start with your water and all of the packets that you collected. And we want to figure out which of our packets are going to be good divers. So we need ones that will float instead of ones that will sink. So just begin by testing each of your packets to see which ones will float. 
if a packet sinks to the bottom of the container, it's not going to be a good diver. So just keep experimenting and collect all of the packets that float. If you need to pause the video and continue testing your packets, go ahead and do that now. Once you've got all of the packets that were really good at staying afloat, now you need to test whether they will make good divers. So you'll take one of your bottles, fill it up with water, and put in a packet, seal on the lid very tightly, and then give the bottle a squeeze. Now this is an experiment. So you might find that you put a packet into the bottle and it floats, but no matter how hard you squeeze, you can't make it sink. That's happening because sometimes those packets have such a large air bubble inside that no matter how hard you squeeze, you can't make that air bubble small enough for it to sink. So just keep experimenting. Try another packet. Keep trying until you find a packet that starts out at the top of the bottle and then sinks when you squeeze. You've just made your very own diver in a bottle. Now you can challenge someone else to see if they can figure out how to make the diver dive, but then be sure to explain to them how you're changing the buoyancy and the pressure to make the packet sink. I hope you enjoyed making your own diver in a bottle today. Now you can continue your experiment. See if your diver works differently in a larger bottle or a smaller bottle. You could also try changing the temperature of the water. Does the diver work better in hot water or cold water? You could even put two packets inside one bottle at the same time and race them to see which one gets to the bottom first. We would love to see how your experiments are turning out. So if you want to share a photo or a video with us, be sure to get your parents' help and permission and be sure to tag the library at CM Library on Instagram or Facebook. You can continue learning more about today's topic too with our digital resources that you can find by following the BiblioCommons link. We've collected some of our favorite digital resources about Jacques Cousteau and other divers, about marine exploration, and about ocean habitats. I thank you so much for joining me for today's activity and we hope to see you again soon.